morning, everyone, and welcome to Oak Ridge Presbyterian Church's uh, Sunday morning youth experience. We're here for students between grade 6 and grade 12, and we want to thank you for joining us. If you are outside of that age range, welcome, and we appreciate you joining us here today. It's a, an honor and a privilege to be able to hang out, to spend some time with each of you, and uh, to be able to connect in this new way. It doesn't feel very new. It feels like we've been in some form of quarantine forever, but uh, it, it is still a new thing that we're learning. It's a new thing for me to, to be learning to talk to a screen rather than to a group of people, which uh, I'm really looking forward to some of this, some of the restrictions lifting, but I also see the importance of keeping us all safe. And uh, I hope you are staying safe and uh, you have people to connect with and who care about you and who you care for that are, are staying safe as well. Uh, today we're going to be starting a new series called Popular. And we are going to look at our influence and what influence we have in the world around us. And when it comes to something like fame, and fame and influence today are going to be kind of linked, but uh, we all have a different idea of who is most famous. And if we were in a room together, I would have you tell me who you think is most famous. And I think we would come up with a list of um, sports people, uh, obviously not my people, um, athletes, there's the word I was looking for. And we would have uh, people from Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and um, movie stars and television celebrities. And like the list would be endless. And for each of us, the person who was most famous would look different. And why is that? I, I kind of stopped to wonder. And the, the answer is because each one of us has a different idea of what's important. What makes someone famous depends on who it is that's viewing that fame. Those with fame in your eyes have influence over you. And those who are not famous don't have inf any influence over you. For example, Kanye West has no influence over me. I No, I could pick him out of a crowd, but otherwise... No influence. Uh, and and what, do, what is influence, you ask? Well, the definition of influence is the ability to have an effect on someone else and the ability to affect someone else's behaviors, thoughts, or choices. And while we may not agree on who's popular in our world or culture, I think that we can all agree that popular people have influence. They have people's attention. And what they say or do matters to people in the world around them. And their popularity gives them the ability to lead or to influence other people to change things about themselves, for better or for worse. And the funny thing about influence is a lot of us wonder if we have any of it at all. We think that the ability to influence another person is something that only comes with that fame or popularity. That's two things that most of us don't always feel like we have. Maybe you wonder how much influence you truly have because you aren't quite sure what you have to offer. You don't have it all figured out, so you don't really know how you can lead or influence others. And even if you do have influence, what are you supposed to do with it? How do you even know how to use whatever influence you have? Or maybe you see the influence that you have but struggle to, with the fear of failure. If I do something, you're afraid to, we are afraid to actually take steps to do it because we don't want to mess up. We don't want to get rejected or make the wrong move. Or maybe the pressure of influence is just too much for you. You see other people around you who have a lot of influence, who are stepping up to lead. And honestly, it just looks like a lot of work to you. Their influence comes with so much pressure and attention, and you don't want to sign up for that. And there are those of you who haven't really put a lot of thought into this whole influence thing. Sure, you've seen influencers on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, but it never really occurred to you to have that you have the power to influence or lead others to. And here's the point. We tend to think of influence as this big, unattainable thing. It's something that we can't seem to reach ourselves. 
we are quick to recognize the influence that famous or popular people have. But somehow we end up missing the potential we have to influence others. Questioning if we have the power to influence those around us isn't a new thing. In fact, people have been wondering about their potential to lead and influence others for a really long time. And I'll show you what I mean. I want to look at an account from the Bible written by a guy named John. We're going to read about a time when Jesus was leading, serving, and living here on earth. And during his ministry, Jesus had a ton of influence on people around him. Of course, there was no social media or internet at the time to measure his fame and popularity. But we do have the Gospels, the four accounts written about Jesus' life on earth in the Bible. And these accounts give us plenty of insight into just how many people sought out and followed Jesus while he was on earth. And Jesus didn't just have influence during his life. 2,000 years after his death, people are still talking about and following him. That's a lot of influence. This particular account we're about to look at takes place in the midst of one of Jesus' most influential moments. This it was a moment where Jesus was talking to literally thousands of people who'd come to hear what he alone had to say. He'd been teaching and doing a lot of miracles up to this point, and word had spread about him. His influence was growing. And now he had a massive crowd following him because they couldn't wait to see what he would do next. When this story picks up, Jesus was focused on one thing in particular, feeding people. And while I certainly appreciate a guy who's thinking about food, I can't imagine what it would have been like to figure out how to feed thousands of people with nothing in front of you to start with. So let's see what happens. We're going to read from John chapter 6. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. That's John chapter 6, verses 8 to 12. Okay, so let's pause here for a second. John wrote that there were about 5,000 men. That's just one part of the group of people. Imagine how much bigger that number would have been if you counted the women and the children as well. In the crowd, there was one young boy who had packed dinner. The only problem? This kid only packed a few small loaves of bread and some fish. He didn't come prepared to feed thousands. He just came with what he had for himself. And here's what happens. Then Jesus took the loaves gave thanks to God and distributed them among the people. Afterwards, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told the disciples, Now, gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So, they picked up the pieces and filled twelve baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from five barley loaves. So the disciples took this young boy's food, Thieves! No, just kidding. Um, five loaves of bread and two fish and gave it to Jesus. Jesus prayed over it and started handing it out. Now, if I were this kid, I'd probably be getting a little nervous. Not only did Jesus take my dinner, but he also expected it to be enough to feed everyone in the crowd I was sitting with. And at first glance, this kid didn't seem to have enough to offer. Didn't have anything to give. Not, nowhere near enough to do anything worthwhile for these people. He just had his dinner. That was it. But still, this kid let Jesus use what he had. And what happened? Jesus just kept on passing and passing and passing until there was enough food to, et fill, to feed every single person until they were full. And by the time everyone was finished eating, there was still 12 baskets left over. Now, there are so many amazing things about this story, but I want to zoom in. I want to get laser focused on just one part. Jesus could have fed a huge crowd of hungry people 
any way he wanted. He could have made it rain bread from heaven. He could have called the fish to flop out of the sea, but he didn't. Instead, he used the boy's dinner. The boy had just packed himself something to eat. Two fish and five loaves of bread. And that's what Jesus chose to use to feed everyone. Jesus saw that the boy had something to give. And Jesus chose to use it to make an impact. By doing that, Jesus made this boy's dinner into so much more. Let's take a look at how this passage ends. John 6, chapter 14. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. The people saw what Jesus did with what this kid brought. And because of it, they started to believe in him. Could Jesus have done all of this with this boy's with this boy and his bread and fish? Of course. But he chose to use someone who was willing to give what they had, no matter how little it might have seemed. And this kid wasn't super important or popular or famous. Nobody there might have even known his name. He hadn't even intended to be influential. He just packed food for himself. But because he just brought what he had, Jesus allowed him to be part of influencing thousands of people. And that's pretty cool. If Jesus could use a young boy with his dinner to make this massive impact over 2,000 years ago, he can use you just as you are today. He can use whatever you have right now to make a huge impact. Because just like this boy, Jesus can use whatever you have to do big things. You don't have to be popular or well-known or famous to have influence. You don't need to be to have the most followers on Instagram, the most viewed, views on TikTok to get it. You simply have to be willing to let Jesus use what you have. You have to be willing to give whatever you've got for the good of others. If you come to the table with that, I promise, Jesus will use your influence to impact the people around you in the best ways. Jesus can use whatever you have to do big things. And today I simply want you to start seeing that. For some of you, maybe the best thing you can do today is to begin to realize the influence you have. Maybe if it's influence in your family. It's influence with your friends. Or even bigger than that. Maybe it's just that one close friend who needs someone to talk to. Needs a shoulder to cry on. Either way, it's influence. And you have it. It doesn't have to be thousands of people. It doesn't even have to be dozens. If there's one person in your life who you can lead towards something positive, that is influence. And if you're not sure, ask someone you trust to help you see it. A close friend, a parent. Ask them what they see you might have more potential to influence others than you realize. Then, Be willing to do something with what you have to offer. Maybe you have time to give your younger siblings. And that's huge. Maybe you have a kind word to share with a family member. Or a a laugh to share with someone who needs it. Think about it. We all have something to offer others. And when we're willing to use what we have, that is influence. Jesus can use whatever you have to do big things. And as we finish up today, I want you to think about one question. What's one area I have influence in? What is one area I have influence in? And then do something with it. Let's pray. God, we pray that you would help us to see our influence in the world around us. We pray that you would help us to reach out to those to be a positive impact 
in the world around us, whether that's the small world in which we are living right now or the broader world as we go forward. God, I pray that you would help us to see what small way we can make an impact in the lives of others. I pray that you would join each one of us. You would be with us and you would help us to know what you have for us today and how we can use our influence to point people to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Have an awesome Sunday. And uh, if you need to reach out to somebody, excuse me, if you need to talk to somebody, please let me know. And uh, I'm more than happy to, to chat. We'll see you again next week.